Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Maika and today we are going to be talking about blushes. I just finished off talking about eyeshadow palettes all month and I was like, okay, I need to shut up about eyeshadow palettes for just a minute. I am going to be talking about blushes instead. Is blush my favorite makeup product? By no means, that's definitely eyeshadow palettes till this day. Um, but blushes do hold a special, special place in my heart because I just think that, you know, wearing a good blush can just perk up your entire complexion. I do have to say though that I'm someone who likes very neutrally kind of blushes, so that's always like, I like something that's not too pigmented and that's very sheer and sure, just sort of like a glow on the cheeks, especially in the past year and a half or so, I've been much more into like more glowy blushes, which we'll see in a minute. Um, and I've decided to make this a top 10, um, but I did split it into high-end and more affordable stuff. So I've got my five favorite high-end slash luxury formulas for you, and my top five more affordable slash drugstore options as well. So I thought that could be a nice split. So no matter what budget you have available for buying a blush, that you can find something that might be up your street. So uh, let's just get started with the expensive options first. And we're going to start off with my newest blush discovery, which is Charlotte Tilbury. And this is in the shade Pillow Talk. I only have one of these blushes because Charlotte Tilbury is of course quite an expensive brand. Uh, however, as you'll see in a minute, it usually doesn't hold me back from buying any products from certain brands. But from her line, the Pillow Talk shade is the only one that really appealed to me, you could say. So I haven't really found another shade that she does that I really like, even though I just saw an announcement that she's doing a Walk of Shame collection right now. That looked interesting, but it, it looks perhaps a little bit dark for my very pale face. The Pillow Talk blusher is actually available in a lighter, the regular version, but it also comes in Pillow Talk Dark. So for people with a deeper complexion and you wanna get yourself a lovely, nudie, mauve tone blush, they got you there. So they definitely do this shade in different options. So the thing you should know about Charlotte Tilbury blushes, in case you don't know, is that they have a bit of a system behind them where the shade is in the middle and then usually it has a brighter shade for the pop on the apple of the, of the cheeks. So the idea is that you swirl your brush around, put that on, dab your brush in the middle, and then put that on the apples of the cheek. Uh, in this case, however, the Pillow Talk blusher has a highlighter in the middle. So it's not a very full on metallic highlighter, it's more subtle. So what I like to personally do is just swirl my brush around in the pan. So I get both the color and the highlight and just use this as an all over glowy blusher. That's just the way I like to use it, but it's good to know. So very often people are asking, why does it look like a nipple? That's why it looks like a nipple. If you go to Charlotte Tilbury's um, um, YouTube uh, account, then she has um, videos demonstrating of how this is supposed to work. Um, so yeah, this is a lovely formula. It was definitely worth every penny that I put into it. I just hope she's going to come out with some shades that I find appealing because a lot of them seem to be very warm toned and very like peachy. And while I like peachy blush for sure, um, I'm not always a fan of peach blushes because I find it a bit too warm toned. So I like peachy and corally blushes mainly in the spring summertime, but for like year round mobs is my favorite thing, as you will see in a minute. I think that a brand that is very overlooked when it comes to makeup in general is The Balm, and I really adore their Instain blushes. I also like my Balm Desert, and um, what's it? No, Balm Desert is the bronzer. Balm Springs and Balm Beach. Those are the, the blushes in that line. And especially the Balm Beach one, which is like a very light peachy shade, was lovely on me in the winter time. But for me, the collection where it's at is the Instain blushes. I actually am like, I would like to get all of these and collect them at some point. Argyle is the one that's highest on the list to get. It's also a very soft peachy shade. <laughs> um, but the ones that I have here are Houndstooth and Lace, and I'll show you Houndstooth first. This is <laughs> a mauve sort of like plummy shade. So this is really, really lovely. Um, I just love how these are packaged with like the vintage magazine design to them. I really also like the look of uh, the reddish shade, which I think is called Toile. 
that one is stunning too and then the other one i have is lace and lace is one of those very bright blue toned pinks which if you have a very pale complexion like I do and you have a cool or undertone, this looks really nice in the winter time when I'm super duper fair. I love putting this on for that very bright pop on the apple of the cheek. It makes me look like I just came in from the cold. You know that like flushed look that you get from like a winter day with like snow outside? It's, it's that sort of look. And so I don't use this a whole lot. It's really like a very particular thing for me. So I don't have a lot of blushes that do that for me, but Having one of these is really good, and this is the best one I've tried. I used to have one by Sleek, I've used them from other brands, and this is just my favorite. Because these Instain blushes are also incredibly long wearing, if you are someone who struggles with blushes fading, I don't have that issue, luckily. Um, my blush just stays on all day, I feel. Um, but if you have struggled, if you struggle with blushes fading on you, then the Balm's Instain blushes are perhaps some of the longest wearing blushes on the market. These do not budge. Now, I just mentioned that I have no issue dropping a dollar on a blush and case in point, my Hourglass little family here. I love the Hourglass ambient lighting blushes so, so much that I actually have three shades. But one of these isn't an ambient lighting bl uh, blush, but it's a strobe lighting blush. So I'll discuss in a minute what the difference is. But yeah, these are all of my hourglass blushes and the reason why I love hourglass is how sort of sheer and still glowy it is on the cheeks like these are the kind of blushes where where I find that with the balm like both of those shades I need to use a very light hand to make it work with these I can go to go to town and it never looks like too much it never looks clownish even if you have some of the more out there shades it's always very soft focus almost airbrushed on the cheeks. It's absolutely lovely, at least I think. So the first one I have here is one of the um, Ambient Strobe Lighting Blushes, and this is Incandescent Electra. Uh, and as you can see, this is a very nice, bright, poppy, electric peach kind of shade. And the difference between the Strobe Lighting Blushes and the Ambient Lighting Blushes is that this is infused not with an ambient lighting powder, but with a Strobe Lighting Powder, which is like a very soft highlight. It has a bit more sparkle to it. So this is even more glowy on the cheeks. And I find that especially this shade, like the Lace shade, it has this very vibrant look. But because this is more of like a corally, orangey shade, this was great in the springtime. Like this was like, it just lights up your face kind of bright, you know, that, that sort of look. My two OG favorites are the ambient lighting blushes and I've got two of those shades. This is my summertime pick, which is the Fused Heat. And the Fused Heat is a red blush for people who don't like red blush. Like I have another red blush, as you will see in a minute, that I absolutely adore. Um, but this is like, if I want to wear a red blush and I don't want it to be too much, like the red blush that works for me year round would be this one. And I love a good red blush, like the very bright pink from the balm. It gives you that very flushed, either sun-kissed or just in from the cold kind of look, depending on what undertone it has, as you'll see. So yeah, diffuse heat, I love. And then mood exposure, of course, I had to feature a mauve. <laughs> mauve plummy kind of shade, and that's definitely a theme. I think every single blush I'm showing you has this kind of shade to it, because it's my favorite blush shade. But yeah, again, this is super duper stunning. I use this all the time. If I want a blush that just goes with everything and I don't know what to grab for, I'll go with this. It, it's just, it's foolproof every single time. And then I'm going to feature something that's going to be very painful for some people because these blushes have been discontinued. These are incredibly hard to find. Only some of the more unusual shades can still be found on the official Urban Decay website, but it's the Urban Decay Afterglow blushes. And they already discontinued these like two years ago and they still haven't come out with a replacement. So I'm like, hey, Urban Decay, you take some things off of the shelf, like replace them, please, please do. And you can tell I love these because I've got four of them. I, th I don't think, I don't have as many blushes from any other brand apart from this one. Oh yeah, and then the balm. I've got four of the balm blushes. So yeah, if in terms of like true, true, like up there favorites, Urban Decay is up there. And from this line, 
I've got two more like nudie shades you could say and that's Rapture and Video and Rapture and Video, oops, let me show you this, both look like this. So this would be Rapture, a plummy, mauve kind of shade, but this is a lot darker than most of my like mauve plummy kind of shades. This, this is not very nude. This is actually a, new, uh, a mauve that works really well if you have a darker skin tone too. Uh, and then this is Video, and Video is like a brownish nude. So for me, this is more of a nude from the Urban Decay line than this is. This in the fall time, Rapture, it, it has that berry leaning look. So, so stunning. And then this is just a great everyday shade. So, uh, and I don't have any other blushes that pull more brown, so Video is very unique in my collection. But then the reason why I was intrigued by this line is the more out there shades. I'm not sure if you can see it through the lid because that was so ingenious about these. These have like a mesh underlay so you can see the shades um, through the packaging, which is really, really stunning. But I've got Bang and Bittersweet. A bright orange toned red in the summertime with lots of bronzer makes for a stunning sun sunkiss look. I whip this out every summer. And Bittersweet is a purple and this is like a wintertime blush for me as well. Again, when I'm super fair, then a purple blush looks really nice on me. I actually have a Wet n Wild like duo blu uh, blush called In a Purple Haze. That's a lot lighter than this. This has a lot more pigment to it. So if I just wanna go for something a little bit more natural, I go for that. If I want more color in the wintertime, purple blush is really, really stunning. If you've never tried purple blush, definitely try it because it looks really nice if you have a cool undertone. And then the final brand, final formula I wanted to feature on the high-end side, side of the spectrum is Tarte. And these are my three Amazonian clay blushes. And I can go to town with these, like with the uh, hourglass ones. These I can go to town with and it never looks like too much. However, Tarte blushes are notoriously hard to swatch. <laughs> so these you could swatch and they look like nothing, which is why I held off of buying these for a long time because I would go into a Sephora and I would be swatching these and I was like, why is everybody raving about these? Until I tried them. The first one I bought is this one. I'm not sure if this is still available. This is Akiote, I think it's called, and it's a very nice like peachy corally shade. This is my summer shade uh, for sure. Um, that's what I tend to do if I love a blush. I tend to have like a neutrally everyday shade and then a, a summer shade and a winter shade, you could say. So that, that shade would be my summer shade. And then next I bought Seduce. And Seduce is a mauve tone, um, but I know that a lot of people loved Exposed and Exposed to me was a bit too pink. So this is a bit more brown leaning. So this is closer to video than mood exposure, you could say. Um, so that's why this one is a bit more unique in my collection. And I know you can't see that on the camera, but this has the pattern wearing down on it because of how much I've used it. This is such a stunning blush shade. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a great everyday blush that I can just whip out and I love it. And then last but not least, I bought Natural Beauty and it's another red toned blush, but where the Urban Decay is very orange toned, this is a bit more pink toned. So this is a red toned blush that works well, well on me in the winter time because it has that cooler leaning undertone. So that again makes me look a bit more like flushed in from the cold rather than sun kissed from the sun kind of look, if you know what I mean. So that's why I ended up purchasing Natural Beauty. There are currently no other shades in the Tarte line that I feel I really need to get. Um, but yeah, these are my top five high end blushes that I would like to share. So let's move on to the drugstore. And one of the more affordable brands that I love that nobody ever talks about is H&M. These hectagonal like sort of blushes came out a couple of years ago when the brand first launched. Fenty definitely wasn't the only one to do this. And these are the two original blushes I got. I also bought a red shade from this line, but I ended up decluttering it because it was a bit too dark for me and it didn't work. My favorite of the two is this one. This is Tawny Peach, and this shade has been discontinued, which is a shame because this is the shade that had me discover mauve nude blushes. So this is one of those shades that looks like nothing in the pan, but it looks gorgeous on. The shade on my face today 
is Cantaloupe. This is a very nice, soft, peachy shade. It has a bit of vibrancy. It doesn't have the same kind of pop as Hourglass's Incandescent Electra. It, it has a little bit more of a subtle hint to it. It still looks quite glowy. It pairs well with a lot of different um, highlighters and bronzers and things like that. It's just a really easy go-to shade for the spring-summer season. I'm not gonna lie. Now a brand that you might expect me to feature in like top five uh, favorite blushes from the drugstore would probably be Catrice. I love trying Catrice and Essence products and Catrice do some really nice blushes. They just discontinue them very quickly. So it's like you will ha you will buy a blush and like, oh, they've already discontinued again. That's a bummer. Luckily, they usually replace it with something that's really good. And I have to say that these glowing multicolor blushes have my heart. Uh, especially the second shade I'll show you. This is It's Wine O'Clock, which is a bit deeper than most of like the nudie mauve shades. This is definitely a bit more plum slash wine colored. It's a bit more like Rapture from Urban Decay, which is a bit darker and deeper. So again, this in the fall time, this with the Modern Renaissance, like if you use the berries from the Modern Renaissance, it's a look. And then in here we have, uh, what's this called again? Dolce Vita. And this is my favorite of the two. This is a really nice peachy shade. And it's just, it's just lovely. I already dug my nail in it from like how much I've used it. The only thing I don't like is that this packaging, it has no magnet. It doesn't really have a closure. So it kind of just like flaps open. But formula wise and for the price point, these are amazing little blushes. Like the Charlotte Tilbury, I currently only own one of these. And I think it's going to be very difficult for me to try and find another shade I might like. Because I think that these have been discontinued. At least the last time I was at a Kiko these were in the sale bin. So that's a bit of an unfortunate, but this is one of their shade fusion blushes. And this is in the shade 05 Marsala. This was like the second blush I fell in love with when I discovered that I really like nudie, mauve kind of tones. Um, that's also why I didn't buy any of the other ones. This had a Kiko symbol embossed in the middle. It's disappeared. It's, that's how much I've used this. This is again, like Tarte Seduce, and Hourglass Mood Exposure if I don't know what to wear and I just need something that will go with everything that is also very sleek and easy to travel with. This Kiko blush just goes with everything and I love it. It's really nice and handy and compact. Such a lovely blush. It's matte but not flat. It just gives me the right amount of color. If I want to, I can go in with the lighter shade or with the darker shade. I mean, it just works really, really well. And then a bit of a surprise to me, which when I, you know, when I looked at this, I was like, yeah, it doesn't look like a lot. But then I tried the product and I was like, ooh, you're nice. And I'm talking about this guy here. This is a, a Tude House Lovely Cookie Blusher. And this is a Korean makeup brand. It comes with a little puff. It's so cute. And like this packaging is very cheap, plasticky, and it looks very cheap. It was quite affordable, I have to say. It was definitely under the $10 mark. And this formula, when I tried it, when I put this on my cheeks, it was like with the Charlotte Tilbury. I was like, now I get the hype. So this is a really lovely, lovely shade. I have this in the shade, what's it called again? Ginger Honey Cookie. And Arna Elaine has been raving about these blushes for some time. I wanted to try the brand. This is absolutely lovely. This is again, one of those like everyday nudie, mauve kind of shades, but it's the formula where it's at for me with this one, like this, this, this blended on and it was just, it looked so natural and it never looked too much. And this is almost perfection in a blush. It could take like, this can rival my hourglass stuff for sure for sure, and it's very affordable. But the blush, if, if you're asking me, Micah, if I look, if I wanna go for a very affordable blush, what would you recommend? And I would say, look at Essence. Their regular line is already fantastic. They now do the blush, which the shades in that line aren't my favorite. I prefer the shade I have from the matte touch line, but these ones. Oh, the blush lighters, you guys. These are glowy and yummy. Again, I've got two shades for a reason. This is Cass's Sunburst, which is again, that mauve berry kind of shade. Really nice for, again, the fall winter time, I think. Uh, and this has a little bit, like this is a bit more subtle on the glow, I feel. Uh, this leans a bit more satin matte. 
Whereas the peach one, this is Peach Dawn, and you can see how much I've used this, I think. Um, and there's like brush strokes all over this, br over this blush. And this has a little bit more glow to it. It also has a bit of a brighter glow. And then that lovely like orangey shade. If, where is it? Who was the first one we talked about? If Hourglasses Incandescent Electra is out of your comfort zone, if you don't want to spend this much money on a blush, try Essence Peachy Dawn in their blush lighter range. Same idea. Is it exactly the same? Are they shade dupes? No. But this little essence blush that retails for like three dollars, it's just, it's amazing. It's got good pigmentation. It's really nice and glowy. It again, like the shade I'm wearing today from H&M, has that sort of like brighter pop such a fun shade for the spring summertime and it's so so affordable you definitely don't have to splurge charlotte tilbury hourglass prices on a good blush however sometimes i just have that moment where i'm like "Ooh, so pretty but this this is formula wise it's just it's lovely i do have to say though that these may fade a little bit more quickly so i think that if you really are looking for longevity again the Balm, and I think also the Korean Etude House Blusher, like this one, stays put very well too. If you're looking for a lot of glow, Essence Blush Lighter and Hourglass for sure. Um, if you want fun colors, I would go for Urban Decay, if you can still find them. H&M uh, does some unusual shades too, I have to say. And then for like everyday stuff, I would go for Tarte and Catrice. I think that's it. And if you really want to you really want to be bougie then try the Charlotte Tilbury if you'd like to. So those were the 10 blushes that I wanted to feature in today's video. I really hope you enjoyed watching it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week. So I'll be soon back with a new video. Bye bye. <laughs>